Hi guys, my name is Megan from the blog WilsonHumpson.com and today I want to share with you my tips for having two kids under two years old. My kids are 15 months apart, so pretty close age gap. My daughter right now is 21 months and my son is six months old. And it has been quite an adventure. I've become so much more calm through learning how to deal with two versus one. It's actually been really good for me and I'm just a lot more relaxed. <laughs> There are so many mothers out there who are so much more experienced than me, they have a lot of kids, or even if they have less kids than me, they just are doing it better. And we can just all learn from each other and take help where we can find it and get tips from other people. And so I hope my few little tips are helpful for you guys and maybe just encourage you on your motherhood journey and that if you're pregnant with your second one, that it is totally doable and that you will adjust to having two and you'll develop your own tips for making it easier. So this video is in collaboration with a fellow YouTuber, her name is Eleonora Hurst. She has a channel very similar to mine and she shares all sorts of motherhood content, things about her life, day in the life vlogs. She shares a lot of awesome thrift hauls and decluttering videos and decor and all that fun stuff. I absolutely love her channel and so I'm really excited to be doing a collaboration with her. She will also be doing her own video on her tips for two under two. To get some more tips, head on over to her video. I will link her video and her channel down in the description box below and I will link her video up in the cards. But just make sure you go check out that video and subscribe to her channel because she is awesome. But now let's get right into my tips. So number one is be flexible. That is one of the most important of all of my tips is to just adjust your expectations and realize that you're not gonna get all the stuff done that you used to with just one, and especially as you used to before you had any kids. And a lot of mothers are really big into schedules, but honestly, I, I tried schedules with my daughter when I just had one, and it really, really stresses me out to have to stick to a schedule. I'm more of a go with the flow personality, so just being flexible and kind of rolling with it is just how I found is the least stressful for me and the kids. We are just so much more relaxed when I'm flexible about what might happen during our day, so my expectations have lowered a lot since I've had my son, and I am just flexible with the amount of things I can do and what I expect from my kids even. Obviously we are all different, so it might be a really big comfort to some moms to have a schedule and just know what they're supposed to be doing and not have to just kind of wing it. That is definitely not for everyone, but if you are like me where you don't really do well with schedules and stuff like that, don't feel bad if that's just how you are. because it. It works just fine for me. For me, highly rigid schedules put such a high expectation of what little children can do and what I can do with two little children. And it makes it really stressful if someone strays from the schedule because then it kind of just messes up the schedule for the entire day if someone gets behind on something. You know those parents, especially new parents, who are like, we can't do that because it's during Timmy's nap time. And Timmy cannot be even 10 minutes late for his nap. That is quite a lot of expectation on yourself as a mother and also on your child to be able to fall asleep at exactly the time you want them to. A couple months ago we were at my in-laws house until about 9.30 at night, which is about two and a half hours later than we planned to get my daughter to bed. But she did really good and it was a lot of fun and, and I feel like it's really good for kids to experience something a little different than their norm. Obviously it's good to not get your kids overtired all the time, but really just being flexible and rolling with just the things that happen in motherhood is one of my biggest pieces of advice for you guys because I've done it both ways. With my daughter, I was super stressed out and tried to do schedules and if she was 10 minutes late for her nap, I would freak out. But then now that I have two, it is a lot more relaxed and I, I definitely enjoy it a lot more. What can really help is to just create a daily list of essentials. So I'll just pick two or three things that I have to do each day. So this last Saturday and that day, I was going to can a batch of cauliflower and I was going to go pick up some pickling cucumbers from a local farmer. And then even if I didn't get anything else done that day besides just taking care of the kids and making sure they stayed alive, then that was okay. Because then, as long as you get your one or two or even three things done for the day, you'll feel good at the end of the day. I find it's really discouraging to write out this massive list of things that you have to do and then expect yourself to be able to do that with two kids. So just pick your essentials and if you can do those, then that's great. The next tip is to prioritize your marriage. This is true for no matter how many kids you have, but I find that as you add each one, it's important to just keep this in mind. The best way you can love your kids is by loving your spouse. I feel like children shouldn't grow up thinking that they are the absolute center of your universe. We are a Christian family, so we as parents first prioritize God and then we pr prioritize our marriage and then we prioritize our kids. So they are not first on the list, they don't 
rule the roost. They don't dictate what happens in our house. And I feel like that's actually really calming for them to know that they don't have to be in charge. And it's also just really secure for them to see their parents loving each other. When I pour into Luke and then he pours into me, we are so much more capable of parenting our children and not getting frustrated. And it's just a lot more of a calm environment. So as you add each child, prioritizing your marriage is just really important for the overall health of the family. The next tip is to teach them to take good naps. And especially if you can teach them to take naps at the same time, it's like absolutely amazing. People ask me all the time, how do I get so much stuff done? And one of my secrets is that I taught my children to take good naps. My daughter was a pretty bad sleeper as a baby, so we actually had to sleep train her. And we started just very gradually. We actually started when she was around four months old and just did very, very gentle sleep training at that point. And then by the time she was around seven months old, we had her pretty much sleep trained. And it was the best thing I could have ever done for my sanity. <laughs> we use the Ferber method, so it is not a completely cried out method, but it is really effective and I highly recommend it. And I would not do this on a baby younger than four months. And the longer that I can wait, the better. If your child is not sleeping and they will not fall asleep with their naps, especially if you have two, it was an absolute necessity that I taught my daughter to fall asleep by herself because I don't have time to rock her to sleep for an hour every time she needs to take a nap or go to bed for the night. Now my son just naturally sleeps better and I don't know if this has to do with his personality or that I'm a lot calmer and a bit more chill. It could have to do with both. But he has slept the night starting at around two months with me doing absolutely nothing. I wish I knew how to replicate this with the next child because this is amazing. So it's so, so helpful for having two that my daughter takes really good naps. I just take her upstairs and I sing her You Are My Sunshine song and then I lay her down and she goes to sleep by herself. And then she will usually sleep for an hour or two and that gives me a huge chunk of time where I can take care of Jimmy or get some work done. And he takes a lot of his naps on me and that leads me to my next tip which is baby bearing. Baby bearing has absolutely saved my life with two children. I didn't understand why it was very good when I just had my daughter because there wasn't really an absolute need to. But now that I have two, it has been so essential. I do not know how I would have survived the first few months, especially of having two, without baby wearing the youngest one. Especially once my husband went to work and it was just me with the two kids, I would put him in the wrap for a lot of the day because especially when he's a newborn, he just liked to be right with me even if he wasn't sleeping. And then even now, he is six months old and he still takes all of his naps on me in the wrap and he will sleep so much longer in there and then my hands are still free for getting stuff done. So in order to take care of all the housework and all the canning and the gardening and taking care of our little homestead and making meals and taking care of the kids and, and running my online business, making videos, like all the different things that I have to do, I do not, I would not have gotten as much stuff done if I didn't wear him in the wrap like all the time. If you guys are just starting out with baby wearing, I have a big baby wearing playlist down below where I show how to use all kinds of baby carriers from wraps to slings to like more of the strap backpack type carriers. So I will link that down below if you are interested. The next tip is to teach your toddler to play independently. Independent play is actually really healthy for kids anyway, but man oh man does it free up a lot of time. I started working with Sophia teaching her to independent play when she was around a year old, especially since I was about six months pregnant with Demi at that point, and I knew that it was going to be really important for her to know how to play by herself for me to have a newborn at the same time. She is very secure in knowing that we're here. I feel like having a very secure baby really helps for them to be willing to go off and play by themselves, but she has gotten really good at it. And if you guys are interested in more tips on how exactly to get a child to play independently, let me know and I will make another video for you guys. But between her taking a really good nap, she takes a nap for a lot of times two hours, and then even in her two awake periods, she will play independently for pretty big stretches. So just teaching her to do those two things has saved me so many times. Those are some of the most important things I feel like to do for your older, older child when you have another baby on the way. She also feeds herself for the most part. She is actually a very independent little girl. She really likes to do things for herself. The more I can let her help me do things, the more she's able to do things on her own. I let her help me with chores as much as, she, as she's able to because that just feeds her want to help and be independent and that's actually been really helpful. It is a balance, this mothering thing. You want to make sure that you teach your children to be independent so that you're not constantly playing with them all the time, but then you also want to make sure that you spend time with each child every day. 
The next tip is to create a safe space for your older child. For Sophia, it was so, so important to baby-proof a room or two. So we have our living room and kitchen are safe for her to play in. We can close our bedroom drawer, we close our bathroom drawer, and we have a baby gate going to the stairway. So she has two rooms that are safe for her to play in. It is pretty ridiculous in my opinion to expect a toddler to behave all the time and not pull bases off the coffee table or stick their fingers in the electrical sockets. It's just, it's not practical at all to expect them to do that, especially when you have just had a new baby and they have been dethroned, as I like to call it. I actually got that from their podcast, Finding the Magic. I will link that down below because it is my one of my favorite parenting podcasts. But they've been dethroned. They were the baby and now they're not, and that they will act out. And so just having a safe place for them to play, especially since they're gonna be breastfeeding a lot, you need to take care of the baby and change diapers. You can't just be running around and be like, no, no, don't touch that, put that down. Especially since if they're in an area that they know they can do a lot of things you don't want them to do, and you're breastfeeding, they will mess with the stuff without a doubt that they're not allowed to touch. There is something about <laughs> latching your new baby on breastfeeding that the toddler's like, oh, what can I get into that she, while well, she can't get me? And that is another little mini tip is to learn how to breastfeed standing up. So I actually have gotten really good at breastfeeding my son while I'm running around and doing other things, but just a little mini tip for you guys. I don't want to be constantly telling her no, not to touch things I want when, when I can't get to her. I want her to be able to just safely play by herself. I don't want her to be desensitized to the word no. I want when I say no to actually mean no. So I try not to say it unless I can actually help her not do that thing that I'm telling her not to do. And that has just made it so much less frustrating for both me and Sophia. So those are my few tips. I feel like those are the most important things that have helped me out a lot. So it is a balancing act and I am still learning how to do this whole thing. I'm still a relatively new mother. I've only been a mother for 21 months and I have two children, which is crazy to me. I was laying awake thinking about this last night that I haven't actually been a mother for very long. But I hope that maybe my experience from these 21 months of mothering were helpful for you guys and a blessing and just maybe encouraging. If you're a mother too and you have any tips, please leave them in the comments so that more people can see your tips. I want all of us to learn from this community and I'm so thankful that you guys are here watching this video and supporting us. Don't forget to go check out Eleonora's video as well. I absolutely cannot wait to watch her video and see what her tips are. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!